In this video, we're going to look at some of the new features in this release of RSpec here on the Options screen. In the past, when you clicked and put a checkbox here under Pause, RSpec would send a message to the camera to tell it to pause. However, some cameras, when you do that, lose their resolution and other settings like frame rate. So there's now an option on the Options screen. If you put a check mark here, RSpec will ignore frames coming from the camera but not tell the camera to pause. In most cases, you can leave the check mark there, since most cameras can successfully pause when they receive that command. Now let's look at another new feature in this release. I'm going to zoom in on this calibrated spectrum. In the past, when you click to open a reference profile, for example, this hydrogen bomber reference, notice that we lost our zoom level. That can be a real bother when you're exploring a spectrum because you have to rezoom in again. Now, on the options screen, we can put a check mark here that disables that automatic zoom. Here we can take a look. When I open the hydrogen bomber, notice that the zoom level doesn't change. For new installations, the default is to unzoom so that new users don't get lost on the screen. Now here's another new feature, actually somewhat of a change to an old feature. We'll turn on our measure lines and bracket this hydrogen alpha feature. Now first of all, the full width half maximum is always calculated now and the Gaussian curve is no longer shown. If I put a check mark here, RSpec throws up these really interesting green lines. Of course, you can change their color on the appearance screen. But they're going to show you the geometry of the full width half maximum. Among other things, it can help you make sure that you're taking the continuum into account if you're using a non-normalized spectrum. There's the maximum there. So that's the half maximum. And there is the full width. So this can make it much easier. And of course, full width half maximum can be used as a focusing tool, among other things. Now here's another interesting new feature. It won't get used quite as often as some of the other ones, but let's look at this image. This is actually a spectrum of a meteor. Let's rotate it around so it's oriented properly. There we go. Now this is time t0, so this is when, for example, the meteor first came into our sights. Here is time t1, maybe it's a quarter second later, t2. So each of these slices is a different time. Notice that line is in vertical. We're going to fix that, but first let's fix the rotate just a little bit to get this oriented exactly right. Okay, so this vertical line here isn't exactly vertical and it should be. Now, for the purposes of this example, I've opened up the capture box so we can really see it, and I've clicked slant. And now we can see we can adjust the slant to get that exactly vertical. Sort of funny looking. One interesting thing, let's take our zoom off. Turn our lines off. As we get our slant right, the features on the actual profile graph will be the narrowest and have the best full width half maximum value. So that's another use for the full width half maximum. So this feature here, the slant command, will allow you to adjust your spectrum. Now it may be from a meteor spectra, or for example, it could also be from a drift scan spectra that you took without a clock drive on a DSLR, where you didn't get it quite aligned properly so that the dispersion wasn't 90 degrees off of the drift scan direction. Now when you do this kind of adjustment, whether it's rotating or slanting, you do lose a little bit of precision and sometimes introduce artifacts into your image. So you want to be careful using these commands. We've also enhanced the element library in this release of RSpec. Of course, you still have to be calibrated in angstroms to use the element library. Let's see what happens when we click on this Elements Toolbar button. Here is a list of all the preloaded element library items available. If I click on one, you can see over on the right, those lines appear. And if I hover my mouse over any of the lines, the line's identity and wavelength displays. If you're doing higher resolution spectroscopy and you'd like to see more decimal points displayed on the wavelengths here when you hover over the lines, go to the Options screen and adjust this spinner to indicate the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. There you can see that we've got one digit. And if you'd like to see a list of the elements in any group here, hold the Shift key down and click on it and you can see a list of the wavelengths and their labels. And if you'd like to add additional elements to the element library, go to this folder and read the README file. 